Welcome to every movie I've ever seen. Uh, today, the movie that I'm going to be talking about is Back to the Future Part 2. Uh, today, I'm joined by a guest uh, from Clock Shelves fame, Paul Casey. And this is the first, I think this is your first uh, official appearance on Hazard Time because I did the Stay on Target podcast and you didn't appear on any of those, did you? It no, was kind of a little short-lived. I've, I have appeared on your channel before, though. Yeah, you, you've done a couple updates, I, I know. Yeah, I did like a... Because people, in the comments at least, were like, it's him, but not. Because yes. we're both glasses and beard. And, you know. I've, I've, I've gotten that before. I think there was somebody... There was somebody who thought Richard was me, but like shaved. And he was like, oh, he looks better like that. And I was like, oh, that makes me mad. Because that's not me. That's... But, but yeah. thank you for ha having me on. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. very uh, grateful to be here. So w when I asked you about, when I asked you about stuff, you had uh, suggested Back to the Future, like any of them. So I guess these are like some of your favorite movies. Yeah, Back to the Future has a very special place for me. And I mean, I have a lot of movies that I like. I tend to like TV more, but I have a lot of movies that I like. Um, I've never necessarily like sat down and made like a list of my favorites, but Back to the Future is normally when somebody asks, what's your favorite? It's pretty much my go-to. I, I consider all three of them to be like one. Like mm -hmm. I, I almost always watch them together because I never, um, I was born after they were all made. So I've only ever watched them really together, even if that's mm -hmm. like a day apart, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, so Back to the Future tends to be like my go-to when I say my favorite movie. And for a long time, Back to the Future 2 was my favorite of those. So when you kind of said like, what might you want to do? I'm just like, Back to the Future. <laughs> well, I actually, you just left with Black, Back to the Future and I picked 2 because 2, I, I do think 2 is my favorite of of the three is two not your favorite any anymore or? so for a very long time it was more recently now i haven't watched like the whole thing in i think the last time i did like a really good like rewatch was 20 maybe 2015 when it would have been like future day right. um but I, I don't know. I feel like three is kind of edging out two mm. as being my favorite now. Interesting. Yeah, it's funny because I was I was talking with a friend of ours a few hours ago, and I said this, and he's like, "Oh, it's a hot take that three is you know the favorite." But realistically, to me, they're all I don't want to yeah. say they're interchangeable because they're not. Like one is the present, one's the future, one's the past. But I don't know. Sometimes there's there's certain things that I like more about three. It might be the love story between Doc and Clara. It might be just the fact that it's the old West. Right. But two has a lot of stuff that I that I love as well. Like there was a reason for such a long time it was my favorite. I can honestly almost now that I'm thinking about, I almost see a little comparisons with uh, with maybe this and the original trilogy. Not you know not extreme comparisons, but like. I don't think Back to the Future 1 would have been much without Back to the Future 2. If if it was just if you just had Back to the Future they never made any movies. I think it's kind of similar to if they just had A New Hope and never made any Star Wars. After that, I don't know what the legacy would be like. I feel like I think the big legacy for Back to the Future if they hadn't made sequels would be the Eric Stoltz casting change right, i think that right. would probably not that that isn't one of the legacies but i think that yeah. probably would have been the biggest legacy of the, yeah. of the movie now two is my favorite i think the main reason for that is there's just a lot more going on in two which isn't like a fault of one and three i mean i think it's maybe a little bit of a fault of three i feel like for me, maybe they simplified the story with three a little bit more. I would have maybe liked a little bit more going on, but uh, two, there's just so much going on in two. You know, they go to the future, then they have this alternate present, then they go back to the past, which is, you know, back to the first movie again. I don't know. It it feels grander a little bit than the first one. That's kind of 
why I like it. It definitely more. does. It, it it has that that grandiose thing, and like you said, they they do visit. So let's see. They have the present, which you see for about five minutes. Yeah. You have the future. You have the alternate present, or yeah, the alternate present, and then you have the past. So you're at least seeing four different yeah. times, and the fact that the I mean, obviously with your Star Wars and and all of that, technology for certain things existed. But the fact that um, Michael J. Fox plays, let's see, he plays the present version of himself. He plays Marty Jr. He plays, what's the, Martina? Is that the daughter's name? I don't know. That doesn't sound right, but it might be. I don't know. Whatever the daughter is, he plays it for a, for a very brief scene. And then he plays the older version of himself. And then he plays himself twice in the 50s because he plays the version of him from right. the first one and then this version that's now gone back a second time. And he comes face to face with himself multiple ways and, and whatever. Yeah. And even... Um, the two docs at one point, you know, interact and, oh, and whatever. Yeah. And there's, and again, not that the technology didn't exist before, but it was pretty, I don't know if groundbreaking would be the right word, but it definitely has its, its merits in, you know, what it did for, for some of that technology and what you could do right. in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I look at two and I, I kind of see a perfect example of how you make a good sequel. Cause I think when, when you look at back to the future and you make a sequel to that, the temptation is to just do back to the future again. You're like, Oh, he went back to the fifties this time. He's going back to the twenties and it would just been like a sequel has to be more than just the movie again. And you know, like jaws two is just jaws again. RoboCop 2 is just RoboCop again. This isn't Back to the Future again. It's there's so much more going on in this that you know, it's and plus I always like the how you know somewhat seamlessly it goes from one to two and then even you know into three. Of course, not completely seamless because there's a different girlfriend. Which did you? Is that something you noticed when you were watching it? Because I didn't even pick up on that. So. And I, th- I think I've, I don't know if you and I have ever talked about this, um, but I know it is out there that I've, like, in general, that I've talked about it. Um, from when I was very, very young, my parents used to, and they, they did this, like, before they ever got married to each other or whatever, they've always noticed, like, continuity errors and goofs and all that sort of stuff. And from a very young age, they kind of instilled that in me. And it would be like a fun little thing where we're watching something. And it's like, oh, that person just had that briefcase in the other hand or whatever. Right. So the very first time, and I, so it's funny, I'm thinking about it now. And I think the first, anything with regards to Back to the Future, I think the first thing I ever saw might have been like half of the third one. Then I went back and watched them because I was at, my childhood best friend's house and he had obviously watched them a few times. He's, I, I know for a fact, he's the one who introduced them to me. And there's a scene, two scenes in particular that I can think of in the third one where um, they're at the, the big thing where ZZ top is there playing the big, um, the starting of the clock or whatever. And doc takes Clara out, and he dances and Marty's like the doc can dance and I remember my buddy being like watch this watch this and then he's like can you believe like the doc can dance can you believe it And I'm just like I don't know what any of this means because I had no idea and then the same thing like when he finally takes the shot at the end you know or not the end but like near the end and he's just like he gets plastered off of one shot because he can't hold his liquor my buddy's just like oh the doc can or whatever and I'm just like I don't And I mean, I'm like, I don't remember how old I was, but like, I didn't understand. And so then like, I went back and watched them all. And so I did notice like little things like you're talking about with the, the different, um, 
the different girlfriend. The one thing I didn't notice though, until a few years after was the fact that the father from the first one isn't in the second one. And then I found out after that has actually caused a huge like lawsuit. Yeah. yeah. Cause they do a pretty good job of making it look like Crispin Glover at least. And I think that that was like the basis of the lawsuits. Like you just, you just made this guy look like me, you know, you can't, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. That's the whole, cause it's a whole thing with people. And I was just talking about this er, again earlier today, as of this recording, um, the concept of using someone's likeness, like you own it for the thing that you did with right. them and you can use that in all sorts of material going forward, but you can't make that into something new as like an independent thing, basically. So like they owned Crispin Glover's image for the concept of Back to the Future, but then using his image or his likeness to basically recreate him through someone else for Back to the Future 2, that's what led to, like you said, the, the lawsuit, because you can't use someone's likeness that way. And you know, that's relevant. That's even relevant today too. When you start looking at the uh, bringing back dead actors thing that they've done, I guess there's with star Wars, but do you hear they're, they're doing that with James Dean. They, they want to make a movie starring James Dean. Now, I guess they reached out to some, whatever family he has left. I don't, I don't know, but it's like a second cousin. Yeah. This is what I remember of the story. It's like a second cousin. It's a movie about war dogs in Korea or I think it's Vietnam, which James Dean was dead long before the Vietnam Vietnam War. But the director of this movie claims there is no other actor that has ever existed that could potentially play this part like James Dean could. Hmm. He did like three movies. I mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from James Dean, but he did like three movies. Like, hmm. yeah, it's weird. And definitely, you know, definitely relevant <laughs> to today. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like this this movie too it has had a pretty big impact on stuff because you know a lot of the stuff. I feel like a lot of stuff people talk about with Back to the Future is stuff in this. You know, they talk about the flying cars, the 2015 present hoverboards is talked about to death. And I think, come on, tell me as a kid, you didn't want a hoverboard. I mean, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. I think did did Nike make Nike made their, those shoes that, or at least shoes that looked like that. I believe the shoes. Yeah. I don't think they had the auto laces, but they definitely made the shoes. Yeah. She don't need auto laces. That's a little, little excessive. If you ask me, doesn't take that well, long. No, I know people who are my age or younger and older who use Velcro because they're too lazy or they just have slip-on shoes now yeah. because they're too lazy to, to tie yeah. their shoes. Yeah. Which I guess is kind of the same thing. Like they, they just, instead of auto laces, they just came up with slip-on shoes. <laughs> but did, didn't he like a lot of people, I think a lot of people believed the hoverboards were real when they first, when they first made this, right? From what I understand, I guess it was either the production company or, because I think it's Hasbro. I think the Hasbro logo is on the hoverboards. Is it Mattel? It 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 might be Mattel. Um, Whichever, whatever company it is, I guess they, their CEO or whatever made a comment about the fact that like, oh yeah, they'll be available soon or whatever. And like they did some, like they used some test footage from the movie right. and made it look like an advertisement. And so then people were just like, hoverboards are coming. And it's like, no, they're like, no. <laughs> but I always wanted one. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. It would be a real convenient way to, you know, travel, honestly. Walking, going down sidewalks quicker. So th- I do. I'm sorry. I do like though the yeah. fact that in at least the f- is it the first two? I don't. I can't offhand. I can't remember if there is a, a thing about it in the third one. But like, so obviously we when we first meet Marty in the first one, he's a skateboarder, you know. And then when he goes back into the 50s, he almost creates the skateboard by pulling the, right. the scooter thing off. And then, of course, in the future, it's all about the hoverboards. So hmm. I really like that there's that sort of 
um, whether it's symmetry or whatever, you know, uh, analysis you want to give to it. But I always like the, the fact that that was sort of there between at least those two movies. Now, the, is the hoverboard in three at all? I, I... Yes. Well, yeah, because he takes it back with him. Cause, so in three, three starts out with Marty in the 50s yes with 50s doc and he has to right. like re-explain everything to him and whatever and he trips over it because doc thinks it was a dream that marty came back and doc mm -hmm. trips over it and hits the organ and it plays like that spooky music and then um he dresses him up like a not cowboy <laughs> right. sends him back into the into the movie screen and then um he ends up using the hoverboard with the train yes i thought actually flies away on the hoverboard i thought there was some type of something involving the train but i you couldn't be for sure i couldn't know for sure i think three is three is the one that um i probably remember the least about i would say just because i like two the most and one i mean no no not a criticism of one but one is a considerably simpler story oh for so, sure yeah and I always, I always, I think works for it. Yeah, I think, and yeah. like, especially with like, we, like you said, like the second one is grander. And I think that that isn't necessarily a bad thing because one is such a simple, easy movie that when they went with two, and especially because they didn't just do the plot, like you said earlier, of he goes back again, which he yeah. does technically, but it's not just he goes back again, but it's, we're going to do a different plot and we're going to do it bigger. And I, I think it, I mean, obviously, like I said, it's one of my favorite movies and, and film right. series. I think it works like on a lot of different levels. Yeah. Uh, it was a couple, a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, I mean, th this might blow your mind a little bit. I don't know if you've thought about it or not, but do you realize that there is a second Marty running around somewhere? In, in in this world okay how because I'm, I'm 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 wondering where okay well because the time travel rules are a little are a little mixed up here uh <laughs> it's not it's it's nothing set in stone but i believe he is okay i i, I would believe marty is creating parallel timelines you know like that is, it in back to the future one is not the same timeline you know his parents are much more well off i guess at least personality wise i know that father is more successful too yeah. and i feel like the his siblings were happier or something also but yeah. you in, in back to the future two you have a line from biff when he, they're in the alternate president he he sees Marty and he says something like, uh, you're supposed to be in Switzerland. So that that's implying that the Marty from the, from the alternate pat from the alternate present is, you know, he's in Switzerland. So there would theoretically at this point be two Marty's because there's the Marty from Switzerland and this Marty. Now, of course, this Mar the Marty who's in Switzerland, he doesn't matter because he's, you know, he's a race. But, but what matters is at the end of Back to the Future 1, you see Marty, Marty watches himself jump into the DeLorean, but that's not himself. That's a, a different second Marty who grew up with parents who were successful and, you know, father wrote, wrote the books and whatnot. That's a completely different Marty who went back in time to an uns, unspecified time period. We don't know where he went back to. He's just no, that's not right. No, no, no. Because so, so the whole Switzerland thing I get, and I've, I've thought about that. And like you said, I kind of just wrote it off as like, it's insignificant because he gets erased, but he sees himself, but that one, cause he, he's, he sees himself go into the thing and then he runs up on doc because doc's just like cheering in the street and whatever. And somebody's going to make that into a GIF. I know it. Um, but so he, Doc mm. is is cheering in the street 
and then Marty runs up on him. But oh. the Marty that just disappeared is the, it's the same, it's a loop right there. Okay, we're, we're talking about two different things. I meant, in, I meant at the end of Back to the Future 1, where he shows up to the mall and sees himself leave and he sees Doc get shot by the Libyans and then he runs over to the Doc. That's the scene I'm talking about. Oh, okay, okay. I, I agree with you on this scene. It, it is just a loop. So like, but at the end of Back to the Future 1, he goes to the mall and it's got the different sign because he knocked down the tree. Which, by the way, is something like maybe second time ever watching it that I noticed. So right. way, way, because like a lot of people, I remember that was like a big thing a few years ago on like all like things you never noticed. I'm just like, how did people not notice this? Yeah, so that Marty, so the Marty we've been following sees himself hop in the DeLorean to escape the Libyans. But that's a, that's a different Marty. Because again, like I said, he grew up with parents who were more successful. He obviously still connected with Doc Brown at some point. And Doc Brown sent him back in time to whenever. He, you know, he can't be going back to the 50s because then, there, then there'd be three Martys roaming around the 50s. So... This... Yeah, but like you said, I mean, well, so it, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it technically, yes, but like you said, we don't know where that Marty went to. And the fact that the time travel rules are very finicky yeah, because they don't match up with a lot of other time travel based fiction. So, technically, yes, it's at, that other Marty is out there somewhere, but almost like the Marty of Switzerland, it doesn't quite yeah. matter, one, because it's not our Marty, yeah. and two, because the rules of time travel are never made completely clear. Yeah. So... I just think, I just think the rules of the time travel within these movies, from the best that you can make them would imply that there is a second Marty out in the wind somewhere. At least that that's just my opinion. At least I, I, th I think other people have talked about, talked about that being a possibility too. I mean, again, it's, it, it's, it's strange because it can't, it wouldn't loop around, you know? I mean, that, well, no, because that Marty didn't, the Marty that you're talking about, the one that's in Lone Pine Mall yeah. parking lot that goes back didn't leave the note to wear a bullet, basically to wear a bulletproof vest. Right. The Marty that's observing Lone Pine Mall left the note. But again, you, you kind of run in, because all time travel somehow or another one could argue ends up with the concept of is it the grandfather paradox or the bootstrap paradox or whatever one of them it's all paradoxical anyway technically right. speaking but to say that the marty that's in lone pine mall parking lot is still out there i'm not saying it's it's not possible I'm just saying the rules are iffy and he's not a character that we care about. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm not trying to say like anybody who's just like overthinking it is, is whatever. Cause I, I mean, I'm, I've probably thought about it in the past as well. Like, you know, we've, uh, we're talking about it now, but it's not, he's not one of i think we've talked about this on things that you and i have done where it's like it's if it's it's not our characters you know what i mean like right. he's, he's not one of our group basically so we don't really it's almost a red shirt kind of thing yeah so i guess that would lead into at least for me where i would go with it what i mean the question everybody's talking about for the last couple of years is some type of follow-up to back to the future is that is that something you would want to see and how would you how would you want it done i from my understanding legally speaking robert zemeckis owns it and has said that as long as he's alive it won't happen mm -hmm. um the guy who plays biff 
like he does because he's a comedian and he's he does i guess part of his i've seen part of his act like on youtube and stuff and he does the uh pull out a guitar and sing comedy bits and whatever and one of them is how you know you know you can come up to me in the street and i'll say hi and but whenever you ask me when back to the future four is coming out i tell you to screw off or whatever or i tell you it's not gonna happen right but then you hear rumors that like justin bieber is gonna be the new marty mcfly or whatever i don't want to see anything i mean not to say that if it happened i wouldn't be there i think the animated series kind of expands on it like they feature yeah. doc's kids at one point but right. like not necessarily to to any point where i'm just like oh i want to I want to see what happens because that's one of those things where I like to, I like to have my own scenario and my scenario of what happened might be different than your scenario of what happened because unlike something that has a definitive end, like a certain thing, um, which you know what I'm talking about and your fans probably know as well. Um, like doc says, the future isn't written yet. Right. You know, so I like the concept of whatever I want to happen to these characters is what happens to these characters. So but again, if they did a sequel in whatever form, whether they do like a TV series or whatever, or even a reboot, I'll, I'd probably be there to watch it. I'm not going to lie. So would you have any, uh, any ideas or maybe like things that you would think they should do? how to handle a fourth one or the biggest problem is i can't think of what more they could do they've done the present they've done the future they've done the past they've done alternate timelines like we discussed i mean like doc mentioned seeing the birth of christ but or you know going back to like dying you know the the dinosaur times and i'm i'm sure that uh you know the the this, you you've had a discussion on here about Jurassic Park. I'm sure because it's all Spielberg, you could probably get a good crossover there. And and you know talk about the scientific merits of that with you know some of your other guests. Um, but I I don't know what more they could do right. with it. I mean, would it be cool to see the train time machine? Yes, because that's probably one of my favorite things that like is only there for like a brief moment and i wish like oh i wish i could see more of that but again i, I don't know what more they could do mm -hmm. because even now if they did it would it be the the future of now or would it be the future of like well we're recording this in 2020 so like would it be the 2020 that exists with jaws is it 19 Something like that. You know, which I'm sure you probably loved that because it's Spielberg's son's name as the director, right? Like, I'm sure you mm. loved that. Um, but so, it, it, again, I, I, don't, I don't know what other avenues they could explore to do a storyline. Mm. I think in that regard, I mean, what they would have to do is they'd kind of have to get weirder with it, I think kind of like a, a little trippier maybe uh more alternate reality stuff but like different alternate realities like they go like doc and doc and marty go to an alternate reality and they meet marty who is played by eric stoltz just for like a little shout out to the fans or something you know and it's theoretically the delorean travels through time and space you know get doc and marty going in an alien world i think so two things really quick one i'll start i'll go the second thing first that just becomes doctor who from my understanding it becomes rick and morty but yeah okay there see I, I don't watch that show so i don't but yes from what from my understanding yes the second thing we were talking about a certain tv series the that features alternate timelines and stuff earlier before we started doing this and that series in the alternate timeline, Stoltz is still the star of oh. Back to the Future. So it's kind of ironic that, that we're talking about that. But that would be like a funny thing. But I feel like that doing a movie just 
to have that. Well, like not that would just... be... No, 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 I know. But yeah, I feel like just... that would be more of like an SNL sketch or, or something. Yeah, I, that would just be like a little bit like, you know, like Mar- Marty, you look different or something like that. And just the general idea of they would have to, you know, they would have to do what Back to the Future 2 did and just go bigger, do more, you know. If it's just like, oh, we're going back to the 50s or we're going back to the 80s, that, that's, you know, that, that doesn't interest me, you know. And the only thing I could think of would be if you give Marty a kid, and this is just off the top of my head, I'm thinking about this, because you said the 80s, which made me think of it. You give Marty a kid, maybe he's with Doc Brown, maybe he's not, but somehow he goes back and they do, um, so like in, in two, they feature new scenes and they, they po or they paste, I should say, um, uh, Michael J. Fox into existing scenes or they reshot the same scenes from the first one so that he would be here and he would be here, right. whatever, like they did it three different ways. But you would have to, um, uh, I mean, I guess the only way you could do it, unless you did like a de-aging thing, would be take his son and put him into scenes from the 80s so yeah. that he's seeing his dad. Right. You know? But even then, there's not that much yeah. of him in the actual 1985 because he's in the 50s or he's in the future or he's in right. the way past. But that's the only thing I could think. But I don't even know what the plot would be. I feel like it would just be a way to do that to maybe de-age Michael J. Fox to be like he looked in the 80s or whatever. So is now is Michael J. Fox in in a condition where he could even where he could do this because I he's been I, he's been in stuff you know I I I saw him he was in the TV show Scrubs he had like a maybe like a two or three episode arc I mean he can he can do he can act somewhat right I mean he did a show a few years ago um, the one actress from Breaking Bad was actually she played his wife it was called the michael j fox show and it was a half hour sitcom he didn't play michael j fox but it's one of those things where it's his you know the name the show after the actor not the character Mm -hmm. um but his character who was michael something or other but his character had parkinson's so it the fact that he had the the tremors or whatever you, whatever the correct term. I'm, I, my apologies if I've offended anybody. I don't know the correct terminology. Mm-hmm. Um, but it made sense that he had, you know, that. Yeah. And I know he did a, a guest spot on Curb Your Enthusiasm where he played himself or a fictionalized version of himself. And he had the same thing because there's a joke where uh, Larry David says something to him and he kind of shakes his head and he's just like, was that a no shake or was that a Parkinson's shake? You know, so like he right. clearly has a bit. And even with the fact that he did the show, he he has a bit of humor to it. But in an, in enough to do a full movie where unless they give the character of Marty Parkinson's, I don't think he he would be able to to do that. I'm, I as He has it a lot more under control now right. with medications and you know advances in medicine and things but i don't think he would be able to do a role where he wouldn't be uh moving somewhat because even in scrubs they explained it away as yeah he had ocd so that's why he was constantly like shifting and whatever and i mean even if they did a back to the future four it's marty and doc want to be the main character anyway you know, they would have limited roles. They would most likely, it would, you know, we, we've seen a lot of these reboots and remakes recently. Think like Force Awakens, you know, they're going to want to introduce somebody newer, younger to hopefully. Well, as I said, have it be his kid. Yeah. And honestly, I would just have, I would just have the character of Marty have Parkinson too. I think maybe this isn't, Parkinson's isn't something we see too often in movies. You know, I mean, maybe maybe that could do something, you know, I don't know, like, 
putting it in, in, in like putting it in the center of something because i mean you know you 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 have 50 movies where somebody gets cancer or your diabetes or something right but if you if you went and made like i f- cuz like you don't necessarily do like cancer or diabetes as a major or as a plot point and not have it play a part and then would it almost if they if they gave him parkinson's would it almost take away from sort of the comedy ask because like unless except for like the few jokes where he's done it is there really a lot you can joke around with with regards to parkinson's because that's i mean at least for me i watch these movies because they have some good jokes they have some good one-liners but there's a lot of a lot of levity as much as they say thing you know as much as he says oh things are heavy it's all heavy i watch this again this is just me personally i watch these for a bit of levity and lightheartedness and i feel like if you introduced this like a, if you introduced his character as having Parkinson's, unless you did it where like his kid is like, I'm going to go back and stop this from happening to you, dad. That's just in poor taste. Right. And to have it be there and not have everybody be like, oh my gosh, we're all so sad. Cause like his, his life has changed forever. Cause he has Parkinson's. That would just be kind of depressing too. Yeah. Well, I think you just kind of, you know, you don't put the focus on it, you know? I mean, it, he, he's got Parkinson's, but he's still the same old Marty. You know, he could still make the jokes that he would make or do the things that he would make or, you know, overreact when someone calls him chicken. I mean, it's still. I mean, you could, I'm not saying you couldn't. I mean, yeah, I feel I almost, and I'm, and I, I hate to say this and I hate to be this person. I feel like a reboot would almost be better than doing a fourth one. That is not to say that I want a reboot of Back to the Future, but I feel like a reboot or some sort of reimagining would be better than doing a fourth one because at least then it would make sense if we retread some ground because we're not saying that any of the other stuff happened, if if, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. So I think we're going to be moving towards wrapping up in a couple minutes here is there anything you wanted to mention real quick? um i love this i love back to the future too um i love the just the whole storyline um it is my like i said back to the future the whole trilogy arguably one of my favorites i, I, I wanted to give a little shout out it's a, a scene i always like for some reason this character uh, the guy who's obsessed with Marty stealing, stealing, stealing Biff's wallet. I think he took his wallet. He took that guy's wallet. And then Biff wakes up like, he stole your wallet. <laughs> there is. So I, I love that part too. Uh, there is one scene in the, in Back to the Future part two, where he's on the car and he's trying to slowly sneak under the window and she says something about uh, she being um, Leah Thompson's character, Lorraine. Leah Thompson, top tier actress, in my opinion. Um, du- fantastic director, too, by the way. Um, but she says something about, you know, you could have anything, anything at all. And Marty in the car says, I wish I could get that in writing. And Marty outside the car says, yeah, me too. That scene never in the first one it's actually from a deleted scene that they had to go back and redo them doing it Mm. whatever because i remember watching it going whatever and people were like no it's there and i would watch and i would show and i'd be like no it's not here throughout the entire thing so i think it's interesting that in part two which was several years after 1989 versus 1985 they re-added a deleted scene from a different angle Mm. it's interesting I also I also like the punks in the future cuz the one guy has, has has a line I always thought funny when he gets on the the pit bull I think he says something like you can't use those unless you have power just the way he says it I always thought it was it was pretty funny and uh, uh, young Elijah Wood too I was just going to say that yeah I like the fact that Griff's Griff Griff's gang is the same Oh, no, no. Well, Biff's gang is the same. No, but I was going to say Griff's gang actually has a woman. 
So oh, progress yeah. in 2015. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Uh, yeah, I think that's... I like uh, the fact that they... Really quickly, I'm sorry. I like the fact that they set up because they filmed two and three back to back. The fact that they set up three in the Biff Tannen Museum thing, where they talk about Mad Dog Tannen, um, mm -hmm. and they and they give you a little bit of insight into Doc Brown and the Von Brauns and all that, which you know, in retrospect, is clearly setting up that they're going to go back to um, the uh, right the the eighteen hundreds and the the scene at the end with the the guy I cannot think of his name the Canadian uh, comedian guy who comes and he's just like I got something for you it's a letter <laughs> like you know and he's just like uh, talking about the fact that they have a bet and it's you know delivered to this very spot and all that I just I mean like I said I don't know I just I I love the fact that the DeLorean flies um, I love the fact that he you know both times because they obviously had to refilm the scene at the beginning where he's just like or my kid's like an asshole or something like he just kind of leans in and says that and and whatever and there's just there's a lot that you could talk about with regards to not just part two but all three of these movies and mm -hmm. and i don't there's not a there's not a single part that i can think of that i don't like hmm. yeah i was i was thinking about it that uh the alternate future with the Biff taking over. I know, I know you see a lot of people uh, say it's like a Trump metaphor or something, but maybe it's just me, but I always saw a little bit of shades of uh, it's a wonderful life. I don't know if you've seen it's a wonderful life. It's one. Yeah. Love that movie. But it's, it, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Pottersville when he goes and sees Potter's taken over and everything's, you know, the movie theater is gone and it's like a strip club instead and change the name of thing. I don't know. That's just that's just what I always kind of saw from our from the alt alternate uh, Biff stuff. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so I guess you wanna uh, give you stuff, social media or something or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at jpgrb. Um, uh, Liam earlier mentioned clock shelves. I, I have a podcast network, which Liam has been gracious enough to, uh, feature on, on many, many occasions. Um, all info for that can be found at clockshelves.com. That's C-L-O-C-K-S-H-E-L-V-E-S dot C-O-M. Uh, we find all sorts of information about everything that we do there. Uh, and, uh, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you all next time.